welcome to Martin School. I'm Harry. I'm Jamie. Today we're going to report on, the fi- on our findings from a recent investigation into why students lack confidence. In today's society, we we are saturated with images of perfect people and their perfect lives. It's no wonder that an increase increasing number of students lack in confidence. This has a worrying impact on our education and ability to make friends and success in life. We decided that we would investigate the reason why students may lack in confidence and what we can do to help it improve this. In a survey of our secondary school students, we found a worrying amount of them lacked in confidence. From this, we investigated why they lacked in confidence and found the responses were best grouped in family and life and relationships media and social media, mental health and additional needs, and bullying. I'm Bailey and this is Family Life and Relationships. Our confidence is affected by our relationships with other people. It's important for us to feel like we belong, but sometimes our relationships with friends and family can make us lose confidence. This is Danny's story. When I was uh, seven, my mum was quite ill. Uh, I had to work hard in school to try and do my best for my to do my homework in lunches and breaks because I needed to take care for my mum when I got home and everything. How does this affect your confidence? Well, I felt like I was missing out sometimes because my friends were able to go out and they would have in-jokes, which I wasn't part of, and it would make me a bit paranoid that they didn't like me or didn't want me to be part of their group anymore. What about your schoolwork? Sometimes I couldn't do the homework because I didn't have time and that meant that I didn't feel like I was doing well in class and it was upsetting because I really wanted to do well in school. So what did you do? Well, I spoke to the teachers and explained everything. They would try and help me work out stuff out. I could keep up to date, spend a little extra time, with, which made me feel like I was worth the time. My friends were really understanding once I opened up that, to them and told them how I felt. They started to plan things I could get involved in. And how are things today? My mum is much better now and I feel like I'm more confident, more confident again. What advice would you give someone who is struggling with confidence due to family life and relationships? Be honest. Talk to people, let them help you because your friends will understand as soon as you open up and there's always someone who wants to help. Thank you, Dan. Hello, I'm Ethan. And I am Sean. Of course, it isn't only relationships which impact on our confidence. We are constantly surrounded by images of perfect people and ideal situations, which can make us lack confidence in our lives. On social media, many people share images of themselves which do not represent them. Snapchat, for example, has many filters which allows you to enhance your image. Whilst this may make you feel good about yourself, other people who are looking at your image may not realise that it is heavily edited and begin to find flaws in their own appearance. In a school survey, a whopping 47% of girls said they feel the way they look holds them back. Of course, it isn't only women. Affected by the media, it affects men too. In many of the same ways, really. Men are portrayed as manly strong beings, which they aren't really like most of the time. Boys know what it means to be a man from family and peers. These ideas are about approved behaviours and modes of thought are focused and supported by media messages. In watching TV, we need to tune in to how TV treats male characters, how we relate to the characters and how these characterizations influence our ideas about masculinity and the real men of all ages who star in our own lives. So what is the answer? We spoke to some teachers here at school and here is what they had to say. More and more men are under as much pressure as women to have tanned, toned body and take care of their appearance. And then if they do, they are ridiculed. Who can win? I don't agree with the way celebrities in particular are portrayed in the media. No one is perfect and it encourages our young people to strive for something that is unattainable. The way we are encouraged to present an ideal picture of ourselves and our lives is causing young people to doubt themselves and place value on the wrong things in life. In conclusion, what can we do? Well, we need to realise that no one is perfect and stop trying to achieve something impossible. Focus on the positives, make time to share your thoughts with the family and most importantly, always remember that you are important. Hello, 
I am Ethan. And I'm Danny. Men- mental health is an issue over half the population deals with. And in our school, where we are engulfed in stacks of work and endless homeless tasks, it is no wonder that an increasing number of students are dramatically stressed and lacking confidence. This has a worrying impact on our education and our ability to make friends, get good GCSE marks and have a successful life. So we decided that we would investigate the reasons why we, why we students may have mental health problems and what we can do to help improve this. In a survey of our secondary school students, we found that a worrying number of students believed they had mental health problems that were overlooked due to the business of our education pro- program. From this, we decided to investigate why they are stressed and mentally challenged enough and found the responses were dreadful. People, people's lives are affected every day by mental illnesses that, that have to be dealt with. This simple everyday task can become gif- difficult to deal with after a while. Dealing with mental illness can cause more stress and anxiety upon the person. It can cause them to change the way they act or how they are around people. One in ten young people suffer from diagn- diagnosable mental disorder, so in a class of 30, that's three people. Approximately one in 15 young people de- de- deliberately self-harm. Nearly 80,000 young people suffer from a severe depression. More than half of adults with mental health problems received their diagnosis in childhood, and less than half of them were treated poorly at the time. Anxiety affects 3.3% of young people. Rates of mental health problems among children increase as they reach adolescence. Disorders affect 12.8% of boys aged 11 to 15 and 9.7% of girls aged 11 to 15. 6.4% of adults display signs of an eating disorder. A quarter of those are male. So what can we do to help? We interviewed Mandy Jones, a store manager in school. Do you think students' mental health is affected by schoolwork? Yes, my role as um, inclusion manager um, encompasses all the pastoral support for students. Uh, I do find that if students are lacking confidence um, or they're upset about anything, it, it will affect schoolwork. Do students have someone to talk to in school? Yes, that's part of my role. Um, they, can, they are um, specifically given to me to talk to and they'll be referred by different members of staff possibly or they can come themselves. They can talk to anybody in school, but anything to do with child protection or pastoral or inclusion, um, that's my role. Have the majority of students who have come to you been male or female and why do you think so? Um, I would say the majority have been female, although I do see males. I think it's because traditionally girls are more open about feelings and emotions, so they will tend to come more, but boys are starting to come a lot more now. How do you try to help? There's lots of things we can do. Um, I can do one-to-one work, I can do group work. Obviously sometimes um, it's beyond what we can do in school, so we make referrals to um, other agencies. Have people who have been referred been cut down on their education? Um, Yes, I would say because sometimes um, we have counsellors that come into school to work with students in school and obviously if you're not feeling good about yourself or you're suffering from mental health problems, that can have an effect on your schooling. So we look at different ways that we can help with that. Do you think self-esteem is the overall thing? I think self-esteem is really important and self-confidence because if you haven't got those, you find it really difficult to do anything else. Um, because you've got to be able to believe in yourself and you've got to like yourself. So without those things that you're struggling, not just school, but out of life as well. Do you think students lack confidence? Yes, I do. What do you do to help the students that lack confidence? Um, well, I myself am a tutor, so they can come and see them whenever they want to, so in tutor time and outside of tutor time. Um, I'm also the art teacher, so I do lots of things outside of school, like um, art club on a Monday evening. So if there's any issues there, they can come and talk to me as well. Oh, hi, I'm Harry. Hi, I'm, my name is Sean. Bullying has been around for years, and, even, and now it's even more powerful since the introduction of the internet, as now many people can bully someone in their own personal space. It's been around... Bullying could have been, can have been happen for, happening for years, but still affecting someone's life, or it may have just started. Whatever the situation, there is no reason for, to bully another person and make their lives worse. Some people have had the some people have the courage to admit that they've been bullied, but most don't. Bullying can be found in many different ways. These are the main ones. 
physical, pushing, kicking, punching, hitting, or any use of violence. Emotional, being unfriendly, excluding, or tormenting. Racist, racial ta taunt, graffiti, or just gestures. Uh, sexual, unwanted physical contacts, sexually abusive comments. Homophobic, homopho homophobic, focusing on the issue of sexuality. Verbal, name calling, sarcasm, spreading rumours or teasing. Cyber, mobile threats, misuse of technology. Bullying can depress, create physical and mental health problems. And anxiety, low confidence. Dehumanisation of self-depression and suicidal thoughts that could lead to suicide. It goes without saying that if you are told you are worthless, you will think that you are worthless, which will dis dismise your confidence. Whatever these situations, there is always help. Talk to people. If you think that you leave it alone and the bullies will go away, you're wrong. They don't. Collect evidence and tell someone the authority. Teachers, parents, guardians, and in the worst case scenarios, the police. Also, there are websites that can help. However, if you can't trust any of these or you can't reach them, talk to a friend and they will always try and help you. We celebrate each other's success through regular reward trips. Previous trips have included ice skating, rock climbing and shopping. These trips have inspired more and more students to improve their grades. Because of this, our school is one of the best for improvement. We regularly have visitors who come to the school to help us develop our skills. An example of this is a visit from David Mason, a writer and poet, who came to our school to run a workshop in performance poetry. We try to have funding lessons and take part in national initiatives to encourage us to improve our skills. Some, such as extreme reading, which puts, puts a spin on the mannequin challenge, which means uh, freezing and put an, in a weird position and reading a book. There are many extracurriculum clubs, such as the news team, which are aimed at helping us to work together. We, we love drama and music at St Martin's Martin school. school. Our school focuses more on music and drama so we can express ourselves. Thank you for listening.